Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ryan Steen, Assistant Director at the Texas Digital Library. Uh, welcome back from the Thanksgiving holiday. I hope everyone had a good turkey bird. Um, we are having our final uh, session of the year. Um, as always, I think everybody on here is a veteran, so I don't think I need to explain the rules today. And um, Hey, Johns Hopkins is on today. How are you doing, David? Um, so I'm going to, at this point, hand it off to Stephanie. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, just wanted to welcome everyone. And we only have a few short weeks left until the end of 2016. So um, as Ryan mentioned, this is the, the last demo of, um, of the year. Um, and we only, we only have three more weeks um, of open on our campus, so it's, I know everyone is probably just super busy with staff. So I know that we had a couple people that were um, on the line a little earlier, so I'm just going to be watching for those, but I think that we can um, go ahead. There's lots of stuff to look at today. I'm ready when you guys are, Cameron. All right. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Jeremy Hoff, and I'm going to be running the demo for uh, the developers over here at AM. And uh, I'll just get going. Uh, this is Sprint 19. Uh, the first part that I'd like to demo is CIR 374. There's the uh, a next button to navigate the next submission step. And so, in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to start a submission. I'm going to do it on this uh, organization in College One that we have right here. And so here is submission view uh, where a student can begin filling in their, uh, these fields. And down at the bottom, we now have a button that we continue to like the grid, which is in fact the next step over here. If I click that, it does advance me to license agreement, but now we continue to document information. If I click that, I am now on the document information step, and it says continue to file upload. I click that, I am on the file upload step, which is the final step, and because it is the final step, the button does not appear. Uh, you know, there's nowhere for it to advance. Um, and we can hop back to any of these steps and the button's going to be on there. So, pretty straightforward stuff, um, but that's the whole story with uh, VAR 374. Uh, does that meet your expectations, Stephanie? I think so, as long as as long if it's a separate issue or something to actually uh, click on kind of um, confirm submission or something like that. Is that a step or do we need um, we need a button for that? Yeah, we will need a button for that. Um, it will need to be addressed in a different card. Uh, that was outside the scope of this specific issue, but um, I'm happy to say that the uh, logic that gets this button down on the page has laid, you know, the groundwork for getting that other button on the page when it comes time to do that. Okay. Yep, that works. Thank you. Um, all right. I'll drag that part over. Solve it. All right. CIR 198, email workflow rule settings per organization. So. Uh, this card does not include the actual sending of the email that's going to be demonstrated on the subsequent card, but um, it does entail by like, creating an email workflow rule on a specific organization, having that persist, and so I'll be demonstrating all of that functionality for you. Um, I'm going to come up here to settings. And on settings, I have this tab over here for organization and workflow. Uh, we can see uh, what would be all the organizations in our instance of Vireo. So here's College One where that submission was just made. Uh, and on College One, we have had this tab that's been sitting over here forever with no content on it for email and workflow rules. So when I click on that, we see all of the statuses uh, that a submission can have in, in Vireo. Um, and when I expand those, I have the ability to add a specific rule to uh, that status. So when a, uh, when a submission transitions into that status, um, it will uh, trigger this specific rule. A rule will consist of an email template and an email recipient. You'll have the ability to delete that rule. 
um, and also to start or stop the rule. So the rule can be in existence but not apply, uh, but then it can also, similar to 0 3 be uh, uh, activated uh, right, right here. This looks a little bit different than Bureau 3 because the Bureau 3, where the email workflow rules were um, created, you had to specify which organization you wanted that rule to apply to as the beginning condition. But because we're specifically adding this rule to College 1, that uh, question has already been answered by the fact that we're adding the rule here. Um, so I'm going to click on Add Rule. I'm going to click on Initial submission. Um, we have some potential recipients here: submitter, assignee, organization, committee members, and committee chair. Um, and I'm just going to select submitter here, add that, and we now have a rule under submitted, and we'll send the system uh, template value initial submission to the uh, submitter when a submission to this organization is transitioned into the submitted state. Um, I can refresh the page and show that that uh, does in fact persist. Um, and it is editable. Um, and I can also activate that rule so now it, it is in effect. Are there any questions, Stephanie? Yeah, um, in in the current email workflows, there's also the condition of um, always um, or if something then that. Um, so, but it, it looks like to me that this would this would be a condition of, of always if it's under that one college. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. I guess. Think this through. Okay. I can demonstrate that. So I'm going to make another organization call it to make that. Hopefully, that shows going on there. Yes, I have college two here. And over here on email workflow rule under submitted, you can see that there is no uh, workflow rule under submitted for college two. Under college one, under submitted, there is that rule that I created. So um, in Bureau 3, the always um, applies uh, no matter what uh, organization or what college or department a submission was being uh, submitted to, that rule would go into effect. Um, if you were to select a specific department or college or organization, then uh, that rule would only kick in if a submission was to that specific organization. And that's the nature of what we have here. So at college one gets a submission, that submitted workflow rule will take effect. College two gets a submission and it will not implement that workflow rule. Um, the strategy that we've settled on for doing an always rule will be uh, to click on the institution to edit the institution right here, manage institution email. Uh, workflow rules and uh, giving you the ability to add a rule at this level uh, uh, will uh, send out a um, an email uh, regardless of what uh, organization uh, the submission is targeted at. That has not been implemented um, yet, but uh, there has been a card created to, to achieve that. I think I'm understanding it. I'm just doing a little work doing here. Yeah, no problem. Can you go back to the card? Yes. Um, email workflow rules um, per organization was the specific requirement here. Um, so the inheritance of rules that are applied at the institution level, which would be equivalent to that always uh, condition in Bureau 3, um, uh, was a little bit more complicated to implement and also just based on the language of the charge that it specifies per organization, it seemed like it, it uh, was conceivably outside the scope of, of this clause. So we decided to uh, decompose it into two separate uh, kind of passes at in the workflow rules. Okay. Uh, the next card 
code to implement that. We have not sized it, but I can say with a lot of certainty that the bulk of the work to set this up was done on this card, and that uh, card on the two sides that I fully anticipate have less points on it than a VIR one can do. Okay. Um, does that meet your expectations for email work for rule uh, as far as saving them on an organization? Yes. Uh, this was demonstrated uh, in a previous uh, sprint, and there uh, is a little bit of the CIR 148 active document sidebar module, which you see um, over here up at the top. Uh, it's mostly functional, it is present in the app, but uh, we're choosing to leave it on uh, in progress for a little bit longer. There's a couple of touch ups that we want to get uh, accomplished on. I'm going to skip that for now and move on to the IR 149, which is the mission status sidebar module. Um, um, in demonstrating that, I'm also going to demonstrate the IR 166, which is as a manager, I want to set a decision to evoke email workflow rules so the right people are notified about the submission process. So we'll go ahead and send an email through changing the submission status using the sidebar module. So I'm going to be demonstrating both. Uh, DAR 149 and 166 together. So, here's the submission status sidebar module. Um, it uh, has uh, this little button here for advancing the status, uh, the state of the submission. It also has an indicator for who the assignee is. Uh, so, I can go ahead and uh, sign the assignee. Um, currently, there's only one user in the application, so um, I'm not able to assign it to somebody else. I could unassign it. And then uh, assign it to Jack Daniels using this mechanism over here. Um, it has a spot to display like action. We're not currently keeping an action log. Uh, that's some future development, uh, but this is where uh, that last section will go when we have done that work. And you can also set the submission date. Um, the bureau here that was done through a, a modal that dropped down, but um, in the modal there was a date picker, and so we just, uh, it was more expedient to use the technique that we've used elsewhere and use the date picker right, right here. So that's how that will be done. And uh, I'm not going to set it because this will be set automatically when we create the date. So, uh, that's the, these are the things that are displayed on the outset. Uh, there are two other uh, fields that are displayed here, of zero, 03, UMI publication, and embargo. And uh, we discussed uh, with Stephanie some strategies for getting those on here uh, because of their nature as field profiles. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than these other values. Uh, but uh, we have some future development plans for getting that content on the sidebar. Um, I'm going to show this transition on the status, click on in progress, and we see across the top all of the suggested transitions from in progress. We also have this advanced button, which drops down uh, some additional content, and this allows you to select any status that you would like to transition into. You can also cancel the submission, which will transition into the canceled uh, state. Once it is canceled, uh, you have the ability to delete it. And I'm not going to delete the submission, but just going to show this functionality. By clicking on it, it gives you the ability to either confirm the deletion or cancel out of that. I'm also going to put it back in the progress. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is transition it into submitted, uh, which should our email rule to fire off. Oh, yeah, that's true. I figured, yeah, I need to do that because it's going to email in the wrong place. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, over here in settings, you can see that my email is aggiejack at cami.edu, which doesn't exist. So I'm going to change my preferred email address to one that is real. Uh, and then I should receive an email at that address. So let's come back over here and click on submit. It. Okay. Close this out. Now 
Honor, would be that I received an email right here to Dear Jack Daniels, and it has templated all the values that we are prepared to template currently, right now, that being the first and last name here and the status of the submission. And then we have some future development plans for getting these other templated values swapped out. But it is firing off the email in response to that email workflow rule that was created. So that's, I think, the extent that I can demo these two parts. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any questions. The only thing, and I'm not sure if this, I'm not sure how folks usually use it or not, it's that there aren't the default transition steps kind of aren't there. I guess that I think you laid them out in order, but I guess there's... These are, over here are the default that were on Vario 3. If I click on Under Review, it will update the status, and then if you need correction, waiting for requirements to be approved. Yeah, so it's possible that we might not have gotten all the transitions and their suggested transitions correct, but it does have the ability to list out the suggested transitions from any given status. And actually, I'm looking at some earlier ones. You do have the right ones. I mean, I haven't, I didn't realize that I don't use this very often. I didn't realize, yeah, after Under Review, then you do have the three choices just like you have there. So, okay. And you can also see that submission date right here was set for today when a transition is submitted there. There's only one other thing that I'm not certain about is whether people frequently use the advanced options or not. So, I'm wondering whether that should, instead of being an additional click to open it, whether it should kind of just remain open like it does now. I just don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if Renee has kind of answered that question and stuff, she doesn't use the default, but she does use the dropdown, which is under advanced. So, we'll probably need to have that open by default. Okay. So. Yeah, that should definitely be able to be accomplished. Okay. Thank you, David and Renee. James, what do you think we should do? Do we want to do that or make a new card? Yeah, I think we need to make sure that on Wednesday. So, what we'll do is we card in that column. Okay. Move it over with the least approval after that detail is taken care of. All right. And how about EIR-166? As a manager, I want steps to transition, step transition to invoke email workflow rules. Yes. Looks good. Okay. EIR-165. As a student, I would like a delete button on a submission. This is going to be the last thing that I demonstrate. And that delete button can be seen over here. If I go to manage my submissions, we now have a delete button on the submission. And if I select that, it gives me the chance to cancel out of that action or I can confirm my deletion. And it removes the submission. Yeah, not a lot to that, but it is functional. Does that meet your expectations for a delete button? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, we should be able to get that expanded by default in that module and get that card moved over. So, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them, but I think that's all I have to demonstrate. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay. I don't think I have any questions. Um, other, no, I don't. I don't have any questions. So um, I need to understand the email workflows by organization and stuff. But I, I understand how it works. I'm thinking of um, just creating the whole workflow and the implications of the email of how you created it or something. So. Um, that's the only thing that uh, I don't have clear in my head, but uh, let's see, we've got a question from Renee. Would they be able to remove any submissions even after we've approved them? Are they able to now? I hope not. Um, yeah, that, that's going to need to be a mm -hmm. car. Um, so um, I can talk a little bit about how that would work, but it currently uh, has not been implemented in Zero 4, though that is the case in Zero 3. So if I come over here, simply going to start a new submission. Um, and take a look at those transitions. So all these transitions right here uh, have different. Uh, implications on what can and can't be done on the submission. Uh, so presumably some of them, for instance, I, you know, I guess uh, uh, possibly, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, approved one of the submissions in that, that state, it has a flag set that says cannot be deleted. That flag is being set, but what needs to happen is we need the delete mechanism in the application to honor the fact that that flag is set and refuse to delete a submission if someone attempts to delete it when that flag of cannot be deleted is true. And so that's going to have to be some, some future work. Uh, it should not be a lot of work, but it does need to be a lot. And, um, and I see that it, it looks like once they submission, once the students submit, then they don't, they don't have a chance to go back in and make any changes unless the status changes to needs correction. So, uh -huh. so I don't, they wouldn't even have the option to delete something if you were, in, when you were reviewing it and approving it and all that stuff, I don't think it's even possible. Um, it, I believe if multiple submissions is enabled, they are able to view a submission that's in the table right here. Right. Um, and the mm -hmm. potential actions that show up uh, change based on the status of the uh, based on the status of the submission. So that would be the nature of the card that, that we would need to create. Is I would like the actions available on the submission history table to change uh, uh, dependent on the status. Some, something along those those lines. Okay. Are we able to also um, will be we be able to select what is showing on the submission history, or um, can we change it to the way it is in Barrio 3? I mean, right now you don't have the title or the degree or anything. So for um, so for the students, it may not be very clear exactly which one yeah. is which. So um, I think I could think of. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why those columns are not here. Um, this part to uh, flesh this page out um, was done um, a while back, and I'm I'm not I don't recall exactly uh, why those columns are not in this table, um, but they certainly it would not be difficult to add them. Uh, it probably was based on the fact that those things like similarly uh, to some of the other issues that have popped up, uh, because those things like document title and things like that are dynamic field profiles, uh, depending on them being set at this place, um, that might be difficult. But I'm sure we can probably figure something out. And just to make sure that I understand, so you you are doing another card that will um, kind of make it impossible to have a delete button with a status of approved or anything else but in progress. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it would, yeah, we would have to yeah address that as a as a as a improvement or feature developed on this new right mission history. So, yeah, I don't think that card exists currently, but I can create it. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? And Renee, are you feeling a little bit better? Well, thank you, Renee. <clears throat> if anyone's not reading, so Renee says that, yeah, we'll just wait to upgrade until after that feature is in place. Um, but I would like to remind you that uh, you will need to help <laughs> test this when it is ready, whenever the developers have it to a point where we can start um, playing around with it. That would be the good time <laughs> to see what it does. So. I will. Okay. Any anything else? I don't see anything else going on right now with the typing. So, uh, well, thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, uh, the rest of the developers there at Texas A&M. So this is our our last one for the year. Um, we don't have any any concrete plans or anything for 2017 yet. But whenever that is um, arranged, then we will certainly send a a message out on the the listserv. So if we don't talk to you guys until then, or we have no um, messages to the list, or if you guys have a, a wonderful holiday break, if you're one of the lucky ones to, um, I guess, have a semester. I think David at John Hopkins has um, a trimester. I'm not sure. <laughs> it sounds like a trimester. <laughs> Is I know that uh, John Hopkins has, uh, does not have the semesters uh, laid out the way that most of us do here in Texas. So. Um, TDL will also be um, semi-closed between whenever UT is supposed to be shut. Uh, we're on UT uh, hours, um, but we will still be checking email throughout the holidays. So if you uh, need any help, just let us know. Well, thanks, Stephanie, and thanks, a and uh, Great demo today. Um, really amazing to see all of this coming together. Um, so just stupendous work. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys again next year.